My daughter recently asked me why she couldn't have something that she wanted. Her reasoning was that she liked it and wanted it, therefore she should have it. My reply to her was obviously just because you like something doesn't mean you should have it. For example, I like sugar, but if I followed that instinct to where it would lead, I'd probably be diabetic by now. And that reminded me of old episodes of Star Trek that I saw when I was a kid because they had this technology on their ship that could materialize any food you wanted just by asking for it. And on the face of it, this technology is an indisputable good. I mean, how could it not be? Uh, food is one of those necessities of life that has often been withheld from people in need because of a lack of supply or maybe political corruption or hoarding or otherwise. But as we all know, there is such a good thing as good nutrition and bad nutrition. And if we had unlimited access to bad nutrition for many of us, that would be a temptation too hard to resist. And that's the danger in this theoretical technology. At least right now, food costs us something and we have limited resources to access it. So we have to balance those resources against the food and nutrition that we need versus the garbage that we desire. And when combined with our willpower, this can impose reasonable limitations on our junk food intake. But the kind of technology that exists in Star Trek would completely erase those limitations, which would mean that things like obesity and other ill effects of bad nutrition, well, they would skyrocket. And this should force us to confront an inconvenient truth, which is why is it that if we had access to an undeniably good thing, which is the ability to feed everyone who needs it, why would that pose such a danger to the health of so many people? And I think the answer is because human beings are dysfunctional or broken or fallen. We are masters of spoiling a good thing. And this is true for so many things. For example, we learn to fashion tools with our hands and instead we make instruments of war. Or we learn to build impressive structural wonders and instead we, we use them to satisfy our pious bloodlust by sacrificing innocent people. Or we learn to find ways to disseminate vital information to the masses through either something like the printing press or the internet. And instead we use that to fixate all of our attention on Kardashian posteriors. Kurt Vonnegut said it succinctly when he said, I thought scientists were going to figure out how everything worked and make it better. He said, I thought scientific truth was gonna make us happy and comfortable. Instead, what happened was they dropped scientific truth on Hiroshima. And very few people have an appreciation for the fact that whenever we have access to some good, we also have the potential to use it for ill. And we pretty much always do to some degree. The cell phone is another perfect example of what I'm talking about. Recently, when my daughter and I were coming home from her choir practice, we decided to stop at the mall for dinner. And just as we were sitting down to eat in the food court, she looked around and then looked at me and said, Dad, why is everyone staring at their phones? And so I looked around and sure enough, everyone within our vicinity was just staring at their phones and virtually none of them were sitting at a table by themselves. And that has got to be one of the greatest manifestations of dysfunction in our culture from the past decade. Surely whatever inane amusement is tempting you from your screen isn't more important than the person sitting right across from you, but you wouldn't know that by the way that we acted. Smartphones promise to enhance our lives by bringing us computing power and the internet and rich media within our constant grasp. But instead we become addicted to mindless scrolling through manipulative media that is designed to turn us into minions of a consumeristic agenda. Again, it's a kind of proof of our own dysfunction because there's nothing inherently bad about the technology. In fact, you could argue that it's a moral good because of the, its potential to give us access to vital information and to connect us with each other when needed. But when mixed with the kinds of choices that we make with its use, the equation yields dysfunction. And for generations now, Christians and the church have been telling us to limit our access and consumption of certain things. And that just because it's shiny and new and sexy doesn't mean it's gonna be good for us. And all the while, the church has been denounced as anti-progressive for issuing those kinds of cautions. Often it's not because the church thinks that there's anything bad or evil about the things that it is cautioning our use and consumption of, 
but instead it's because that they can be dangerous in the hands of those who are unfit to use them, namely us. And the reason is because we lack good judgment and self-control. And the remedy that the church has always prescribed has been fasting, which is a kind of overcompensation to fix that lack of self-control so that you can become the kind of person who can wield good things without the risk of contaminating them. An okay example of this, this principle to illustrate my point would be like the astronauts on the International Space Station. Because when you persist in a, an environment that is zero gravity, your muscles become weakened because they're no longer resisting the forces of gravity like those of us who are down on the surface. So they have to overcompensate for that with excessive amounts of exercise to try and find that equilibrium. This is what fasting does for Christians. We don't do it because we think of some good things like food or sex or technology as bad. We do it because we think that we are bad and that we need to overcompensate to become good. Heaven, I imagine, will be a state of being in which nothing is withheld from us, but only because we will have become perfectly good. And as long as we are not perfectly good, we can't have unlimited access to good things without the potential for injuring ourselves or corrupting those good things. And I think we would be well served by a reclamation of an appreciation of the fact that we are broken or fallen, and that we should be careful about what good things we allow ourselves access to. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed that, then please consider subscribing and liking, and come find me on Facebook and Twitter. It's a huge help when you do that. It helps us get these videos in front of more and more people. And a big thank you goes out to you, Catholic, for presenting these videos. And if you want to support the making of these videos, then please consider supporting my work as a digital media and marketing expert. My company, Holds With Design, specializes in branding, web and graphic design, marketing, social media, videography, and all that kind of good stuff. So if you know of a parish, a diocese, a ministry, or a business that needs help in those areas, then please send them our way and I'm sure we can help them out.